Hello, welcome to lesson 11 of the Learn Swift for Beginners series. In this lesson, I want to introduce to you UIKit. It's an Apple framework that contains many of the classes we're going to need in order to construct iOS apps. All right, so let's dive in and see what's available in UIKit. So like I mentioned in the intro for this video, the UIKit framework is essentially a library of classes that Apple gives us to build apps with. When you think about it, there are a lot of common elements to any sort of app. For example, uh, apps may have views, they may have buttons, you know, all apps are going to have things that you need to present to the user. Uh, apps are going to need to handle user interaction from the person using the app and so on and so forth. So to build that functionality out every single time you're going to build an app is extremely tedious and not to mention complex and complicated. So Apple has provided UIKit for us to use and it contains a ton of pre-built classes for us to handle all of these common things. So here I'm looking at the UIKit reference guide um, which contains a list of all of the UIKit classes that are available for us to use. I'll link to it in the description below the video, but if you want to look for it yourself, uh, just go into Google and type in Apple space UIKit. Don't just type in UIKit because um, the first few results for that query um, isn't the Apple UIKit, so just type in Apple space UIKit to find the correct one in the first result. It was also essential to learn about inheritance before I told you about UIKit because many of these classes inherit from each other. They build off of each other um, so they don't redefine things. And this reference guide used to be kind of organized in a hierarchy so you could see which classes inherited from other classes. But since they've changed it and they've made it kind of a listing so you don't get that. But I did a Google search and I found an image that I'm sure this is not the complete um, UI kit because this image was from 2012 I think yeah you can see here in the URL it's from 2012 but it does give you an idea of how the classes are organized so you can see at the very uh, top of this tree if you can imagine um, this left side being kind of at the top of the tree uh, and this right side being the bottom of it if you take, for instance, this UI button class, which represents a button that the user can tap on the screen, UI button inherits from UI control, which inherits from UI view. And if you just follow this line, it inherits from UI responder and finally from NS object. So that UI button class is a culmination of all of that functionality, you know, from that chain. And let me just take a little moment to explain it to you so you can see how that UI button class is finally constructed. So this NS object class is the root class of everything. You can think of it as the big grandfather or granddaddy. And what this NS object class does is it provides that basic functionality that allows you to create an object from a class definition. So that's something we went through in part one of the classes lesson. So this NS object class kind of gives you that functionality. And if we take a look at what was the next one down the chain? So the UI responder class. So this UI responder class inherits from NS object means that it contains that foundation that's going to be needed by, you know, all of these UI elements or user interface elements. Okay, so the next one down is a UI view. So UI view inherits from UI responder, which inherits from NS object. So UI view gets all of that functionality. And on top of that, um, the UI view class provides functionality for displaying something onto a view. So a UI view is um, something that you can show to the user. So it contains all of that functionality and code. And then next, in that hierarchy down to the UI button, we have UI control. Now UI control contains all of that functionality before it following this line here. Uh, and on top of that contains uh, basic code and functionality for a user element control. So stuff that is specific for um, displaying onto a view, um, handling user interaction and events, um, and responding. So then we have a specific type of UI control, and that is the UI button, which 
Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks and behaves like a button with certain button events. So that's just one example of you know the path. You can see that there's a whole ton of classes and there's even more now. So whenever you go and you know before you go and do something with your app, chances are um, you can probably leverage something from UIKit to build off of rather than building something from scratch. So in this video, I just wanted to give you guys an introduction to UIKit because we're going to be using a lot of classes from here. And every time I do, I will try and remember to reference this guide or at least link to it so you can take a look at these classes. Um, it's very useful and handy to have at your fingertips um, because you can click into these classes and then you can find out for this UI button class what sorts of functions it has and properties it has that you can use and leverage and how you can perform specific things with the button or with that class. And furthermore, I might do another video series where we go over specifically um, different UI elements um, because I think that would be useful for beginners to understand how to use, for example, like a date picker or a text field or a slider or a switch or something like that. Um, so that might be a separate series on just UI elements. Okay, so thanks for watching and if you'd like me to continue producing these videos for you guys, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to help the channel grow and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.